Welcome to Firearms of America. Today, as you guys can see, I have some cool hand boots for review. Yes, and these are cool hand zero grand hiker waterproof hiking boots. Yes, and overall, I do like these a lot. There are a lot of benefits to having these fancy cool hand hiking boots, uh, but there are some major, major problems that I think Cole Hand needs definitely to address. So if you're ready, let's start the review. As some of you already know, this review is specifically for my ultimate survival boots section. Basically, if this wasn't just your regular fancy hiking shoe, but it was... Uh, it became the survival boot. Something bad happened and you were wearing these or maybe you had them in the house and you put them on and that's it. You had to wear them for days. You had to walk, you had to run, you had to fight, you had to climb. You had to do whatever is necessary to survive. Would these be good to survive in? Well, how do we make judgment? We make judgment based on eight different criteria. Let's begin. Criteria number one, of course, comfort level. Right, one of the more important ones. And I have to say comfort, whenever it comes to the comfort, these excellent comfort level. I do like the comfort level of these boots a lot. And in order to test the comfort level, what I do is I do a three mile run and then a five mile walk in literally everything that I review on this channel, whenever it comes to shoes, boots, whatever, uh, trail running shoes. Um, and uh, definitely was easy to run in these boots. There are a few factors that contribute to that uh, comfort level let's start with the very first one of course the weight and uh let's see exactly how heavy or light these are this is size 10 and the size 10 is 14.6 which is an excellent weight um usually i say if you want something that is um light that feels light on your feet you want to find something that is under 20 ounce and as you can see, these are definitely well, well under 20 ounce. And that definitely, you know, feels whenever you are running. There are a few other factors that contribute to the comfort level. Another one is the flexibility of the bottom sole. As you can see, the bottom sole is actually very, very, or, or outsole, however you like to refer to it. Very, very, very flexible. So great job there as well. Um, let's go into the inner sole here. And the inner sole is pretty good as well. Let me take it out. As you can see, it has a decent, decent shaping to it. A little bit of a finicky material to it. Does not really provide as much of the support as you could have. Does not provide as much of the... Uh, arch support as it could have. Heel bed is all right, but it could have been better, definitely. Now the padding in the heel is pretty good. Could have been a little better, but decent. And then uh, the front, um, cold hand. What the hell is this, guys? What, 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 it, what is this? So yes, Cole Hand decided not to do anything. When I, so pretty much this, this is your, this is really your inner soul, all right? Uh, but, Luckily, Cole Hunt decided to implement some uh, additional jelly layer on the bottom and that really, really helps. I'm really glad they did it because with this, it would have been just a nightmare. Uh, I mean, it's still a nightmare. Honestly, I would just cut this off and, and put it in and stick it in somehow or maybe get rid of this completely and get a new one. Uh, would be pretty decent. Um, but this jelly definitely helps a lot, this jelly layer, with uh, especially whenever you're running from the impact protection. Um, you do have some padding in the tongue. Pretty decent and not too fantastic, but pretty decent. Some more or less okay padding in the shaft, not much in the body, body of the shaft. So that goes, this pretty much non-existent here. It goes straight, so not much of protection, not much of comfort from that. And there is really no padding here. So this is very, very hard. Um, so if, 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 if you are not getting this in the right size, you're not gonna like them, you're not gonna feel very good in these keys. So very important to get this in the right size. Another thing that I wanted to mention, a little bit of a problem with the comfort level, is the creasing at the front right here, this particular spot right here, as you can see. The way it breaks, it definitely creates a pressure point on your toe, does not feel good. You definitely start feeling fatigue after about a mile of walking in these, running even faster. Um, 
It, this will break in, however, over time. So if you are the type of person that is okay with stuff breaking in, I'm not personally. I like stuff that is great and comfortable out of the box. Uh, but after break-in period, this should be fine. So if you're okay waiting, that's 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 on you. You 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 should be fine in that case. Let's move on to the criteria number two now: proofing and protection. Now, proofing-wise, these are waterproof, although. Cole Hunt decided uh, not to even bother with uh, the clearance of the waterproofing. As you can see, it's the uh, yeah, it's only about only about four inches of waterproofing, which the shaft is about six inches, not about it's exactly six inches. So yeah, I don't know why Cole Hunt decided not to implement another two inches of the waterproofing with the tongue ga ga gusseting. Jesus, what a freaking hard words for me to pronounce. The gusseting. Um, I mean, might not be very experienced with the hiking boots. Obviously, Cole Han, they're more of the dress shoes, fancy shoes. Um, so maybe that's the case, but could have done a little better there. Protection wise, you do have. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it doesn't, it will not give you anything sufficient of the protection from the impact of a big rock falling on your toe or something like that but still you do have that uh whatever harder toe not, not very hard but still somewhat somewhat reinforced not much of course from the sides here in the shaft there is really no padding the heel there is really not much of the reinforcement there and the outsole you do have the protection from the outsole but then there are these as you can see um grooves that i mean if then something sharp goes in through there that's much less space for it to go through to get to your foot um, again, not entirely sure what why Cole had decided to do that. Probably for the flexibility of the outsole, but nevertheless, it sacrifices in the protection. So not much to talk about there. Let's move on to the criteria number three: quality and the design features. I mean, quality-wise, Cole Han, everybody knows that brand. They do pretty good dress shoes. Uh, they they don't seem to be very experienced whenever it comes to the hiking boots, as we can see so far. Uh, but but quality wise you can definitely tell that these were built very 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 nicely I do like the build um, The design features usually I talk about the lacing system lacing system here is all right not Fantastic in any way the strings are actually the lace itself is pretty good. I do like it a lot, but these fabric well not fabric, but the same material that they used in the boot um, here these closed loop hooks uh, they don't they don't allow for the strings to close to tighten very proportionally these open hooks over here they are pretty good however right here i feel like they they should have implemented another pair of open hook right here on the top because there's just way too much yeah you get the point uh, again it seems like cold hand they're just not very experienced whenever it comes to the hiking boots um, in general they didn't do very good research and then speaking of the design features i'm not sure why this much of the extra material that was left here uh maybe for the design for the looks but it just it, it feels really really weird and i mean obviously adds additional weight unnecessary weight there all the bulky stuff in there all right, let's move on to the criteria number four now, outsole traction and stability. Um, of all the things that I mentioned, of all the problems, uh, this is the biggest problem right here, the outsole. Um, this is completely, completely unacceptable for literally any kind of hiking that you might be doing. I do not recommend this uh, hiking boot for more or less any kind of serious hike. If you're going for a nature trail, I don't recommend it because you're probably going to slip and fall. This is extreme, unbelievably freaking slippery. Probably one of the most slippery outsoles that I have reviewed on this channel. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so hard on Colham, but it's their fault. They should have done a little bit of a better research whenever it comes to the hiking boots. This is just terrible. Um, this right here isn't bad. If they did this material throughout the whole thing, 
it would have been that bad because this is sort of grippy rubber this is just i mean this is really you can just figure skate in this <laughs> in order to test the the traction and stability whenever i do my run i do it on a variety of different surfaces uh older asphalt newer tarmac sand dry sand wet sand dry grass wet grass rocky road um concrete some trail surface and then some marble and tile in the end and this is this is bad pretty much on everything except maybe asphalt and some tarmac and some concrete. Everything else is pretty bad. Very, very slippery on marble and tile. Extremely slippery on wet grass. You can just figure skate on the wet grass. Um, not very good on the sand. On the dry sand it's alright, but on the wet sand you do have the sand getting in between the grooves and getting stuck in there and it makes it just flat and slippery and also heavy. All right, keep that in mind. And the same goes for the rocky road. Uh, the smaller rocks, they tend to get in between the grooves and get stuck in them. Not very good. So Kolhan, you guys have to definitely upgrade this outsole. It's not acceptable for literally pretty much anything unless you are going, I don't know, I don't know, something. If, if, if this is just your regular work boot and you're going to work, not work boot like a factory type of work, but like an office type of work where you go to your office and you sit down and you sit all day at the desk, okay, that might be acceptable. But, <laughs> but anything else, if you involves walking, not very good. Let's move on to the criteria number five now, the temperature. Now, these are not insulated in any way, so they're not designed to be winter boots. I would not recommend them as winter boots anyway because winter to me involves snow and ice and this is hazard right here snow and ice stay away this is not for snow and ice at all um whenever it comes to the warm temperatures these are pretty breathable um not too bad because they're the material is very thin um it's it's definitely on the warmer side because of the material but still you know not too bad so i would say more of a spring and fall type of boot all right now whenever it comes to the sizing these are definitely true to the size keep in mind it's very important to get this in the right size you don't want your toe smashing at the front so i recommend getting half a size bigger than your normal shoe size so if you have your shoe size you have your dress shoes sneakers in size nine and a half get this in size 10 all right it will help you let's move on to the criteria number seven now the balance ap application so if this really was your ultimate survival boot would this be good for your survival so before obviously you know before before we get to some good parts about this boot let me say this is probably one of the worst options that you can get for literally anything including your hiking and definitely your survival very bad outsole for literally anything um not much protection not a very good waterproofing okay comfort but could have been way better if there was a better inner sole, if there was a little bit smarter implemented padding. Um, the weight is good and the flexibility of the bottom sole definitely helps, but the, the, the way it is slippery, not good. Now, let me talk about some good things about this type of boots. Not this particular boot, but this type of boots. I think Cole Han is definitely onto something here. Because as you can see, the design wise, that it looks very much like a normal dress shoe, something that you can casually wear, something that you can go on a date, something that you can go to your office job, whatever, and look presentable. And I do like this a lot whenever it comes to ultimate survival boots. Because think about it, your survival situation most likely is going to be something unexpected so it is much better to have something that you're going to wear on a daily basis compared to something that looks something like out of post-apocalyptic movie right that you have in your closet that if something bad happens it's probably going to be in your closet and you have to get to your closet and put it on and now you have to survive right so there's this extra time this is you wear on a daily basis so most likely this is what you will end up with in your ultimate survival situation right so this is definitely a plus but like i said Cole Han, they need to address these issues with waterproofing, with outsole, with the comfort, with inner sole. I mean, this is just freaking unacceptable. This is the worst inner sole that I've seen on this channel. And this comes from Cole Han. This is, this is a great brand. I do like them a lot and uh, I just don't get it. I don't, don't understand what happened. And uh, let's move on to the criteria number eight now, the price. Now, price-wise, 
it varies. Now, you can get these boots for about $120. You can get them for $150, $180, depending on the color, depending on the size. The link is in the description below. Check it out. $120, I think it's is is not a very good price. Honestly, I can, no, it's not a good price because for $75 I can get a boot that is phenomenal, all right? So for 120 getting this, something that might get you killed <laughs> by slip and fall, not very good. Um I think it, Cole Han could have done a much much better job overall and for $120, considering the brand, considering the build quality, the materials, whatever, the comfort level, the lightness, if it had the good outsole, if it had the good inner sole, if it had the good waterproofing, good lacing system, I think I could have been like, okay, yeah, $120, decent price. But seriously, guys, for $120, you can get freaking Salomon X Ultra 3 Mid GTX. All right, that that's really should tell you everything about it. Um, right there so let me know in the comments below guys what do you think about this boot what do you think about this review usually i i try to be positive but uh well you know i mean if you are getting because you like cole han if you are getting these because you want to look fancy and you're not considering any kind of hiking in this any kind of hiking in this you're not considering um because this really is not a hiking boot yet Kolhan can make it a hiking boot, but this is not a hiking boot so far. So, thank you very much guys for watching. If you found this review useful, please consider hitting the like button, please consider subscribing, and if you're still planning to buy this, please consider using the link, the Amazon link in the description below. Uh, thank you very much guys for watching. This was Firearms of America. I'll see you guys in the next video.